What's up, everybody? Today we're talking Photoshop. Layers, styles, blending modes, selections, and much more. So turn on the light bulb and let's get into it. All right, we're going to start by opening up our light bulb image in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and find the light bulb in grass.jpg and click Open. Now, always when we start a new project in Photoshop, I like to go ahead and reset all my tools. So it doesn't matter what tool you have selected over here, the tool will show up here. You're going to right click and reset all tools and then click OK. That's going to get rid of any kind of previous settings you may have had in a previous project. And that way we're all starting on the same page. We also want to go over to our window um, toolbar up here at the top. Go to Workspace, make sure it's on Essentials, and Reset Essentials. That way all of our panels and tabs all look the same, and you know where I'm at when you're trying to find a specific tool or panel. All right, so we have our light bulb open. We're going to go ahead and place the bug image on top of this one. We're going to embed it into our file. So we're going to go to File, and then Place Embedded. Navigate to that Firefly JPEG, and then click Place. Now we've got it on top of our light bulb. And you'll notice over here in our layers panel, we have our background layer, which is the light bulb and our firefly, which is what we just put on there. All right, so now that we have the firefly, and if you didn't notice, I clicked on that light bulb right there that turns on and off the layer, so you can see it on and off. Um, now that I have that firefly layer selected, I'm going to use a really cool tool that is new to Photoshop in the last couple versions. It's called the the object selection tool. So over here on the left hand side on our toolbar, um, it is the fourth tool down. If you have your mouse over it, it should say object selection tool. Um, if you click and hold on that tool, you'll see some other selection tools, but object selection tool is the one we want. When it is selected, we have this new crosshair cursor with a little rectangle next to it. Basically what it wants you to do with this object selection tool is to click and drag a box around some object and Photoshop will try to pick out that object from the image. So we're going to do that here on our Firefly layer. Make sure that you are on the Firefly layer, you're not on your background layer, so you have it selected here. And we're just going to click and drag to create a box, a rectangle around the insect, our Firefly. Now, Photoshop does a pretty good job trying to pick out where that image is. It's not perfect. I'm going to use Command Plus on my keyboard to zoom in a little bit. If you're on a Windows computer, you're going to use Control Plus. And you can see that my dotted lines are pretty good around the edges here, but then it kind of loses around the leaf. It gets a little um, not as perfect selection there. That's okay. We're going to go into a mode called Quick Mask Mode. Quick Mask Mode is an amazing tool to help you fix up your selection. So to make sure that your selection is exactly where you want it and doesn't mess up anywhere if Photoshop isn't acting perfectly the way that you want. So Quick Mask Mode, different than a layer mask or a vector mask, it's Quick Mask Mode. Quick Mask Mode edits your selection, so where those dotted lines are. Two ways to get into quick mask mode. You can either click on this icon underneath our color picker. It looks like a square or a rectangle with a circle inside of it. Or you can click on the Q key on your keyboard, Q. So I just clicked on Q on my keyboard, clicked again to go out of it. So quick mask mode. And you'll notice that it is a mode. It's something that you can go into and out of. In, out, in, out. All right, so we're in quick mask mode right now. And you can see that it's kind of... um. It looks like it's a button that's been pressed down over in our toolbar. That's one way that we know that we're in quick mask mode. Another way that we know that we're in quick mask mode is that the layer turns pink over here in the layers panel. And then obviously everything that is not selected has this red tint to it. And then everything that is selected, everything that was inside of our dotted lines, is its normal color. All right, so this is how quick mask mode works. What you're going to do in quick mask mode is you're going to use a paintbrush and just a regular paintbrush. So that's um, our tool over here on the left hand side, the brush tool. And we're going to use black and white only. If you have other colors selected here, go ahead and click on this little icon to the top left of the color picker and that will reset it automatically to the black and white colors. If you click on this arrow, this um, kind of curved arrow with um, going back and forth, it will switch your foreground and background colors so that the black and white switch between being foreground and background. In quick mask mode, black takes away from your selection and white adds to your selection. 
So right now, everything that's its normal color is selected. So I want to take away, or sorry, I want to add the selection right here. You'll notice that the part of the insect's head did not get selected. So I want to add to my selection. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it so that white is in the front. That is the color I'm painting with. And then as always, whenever you're using a paintbrush tool, you can go up here to the top and change the size of your paintbrush. Really big there, really smaller there, and then the hardness. I'm going to use a 100% hardness of my brush. That means that there is no faded edges whatsoever. I'm going to have a very solid edge for my selection, and that's fine. That's what I want it to be. So I moved it to, up to 100, and right now my size is 23. I'm going to play around with that a little bit when I'm actually in here editing. Um, one way to increase or decrease the size of your paintbrush tool whenever you're in a paintbrush tool is using the brackets on your keyboard. The right bracket increases the size of your paintbrush, and the left bracket decreases the size of your paintbrush. So let me undo that real quick. So increase with the right bracket and decrease with the left bracket. All right, so like I said, I wanna add to my selection right here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more with that Command Plus or Control Plus if you're on a Windows. And then I can just paint with my white hard paintbrush that little part right there to add it back in. Same thing down here. I'm gonna make my paintbrush a little bit smaller with that left bracket on my keyboard. And then same up here, just kind of painting along where I want to add back in the part that Photoshop did not get. If you wanna do a straight line while you're using the paintbrush tool, you can click once in one spot, hold down shift, and then click again, and it will automatically connect the two. It's a good way to get some straight lines in there. If it's not perfect, that's okay because we are in quick mass mode. This is all about fixing up your selection and getting it exactly where you want it. Now I'm using a mouse right now and I'm not using the best surface for my mouse. And so sometimes my, my um, cursor will kind of slide away from me. That's what happened right here. But like I said, we're going to fix it up. So remember that black takes away from the selection. So I just switched over to black. And then now I can fix up that little area that I had a slide at. Same thing over here, just kind of touching up all the little areas. Now, I will say that this is probably the most tedious part of editing in Photoshop is getting those selections exactly where you want them, especially if you want it to be perfectly along the, along the edge. It does take some time. It takes um, some practice and patience. So be patient with yourself. One tip that I've kind of learned as I've done this is to get a smaller paintbrush to start with. So I'm decreasing my size and then go around the edge and I'm using the shift key to make those straight lines, make small straight lines, get the outline that you want. And then once you've got the outline, then you can use that bigger paintbrush tool and go in and fill in the spaces that you want to, um, to fill in faster. So that's my, the, the process that I use. Now I'm going to fast forward a little bit because this does take a while. Um, just pay attention to what I'm doing and you get to do it on your own. Like I said, this is a tedious process, but once you get it exactly how you want it, then it's gonna be awesome. Okay, so I finished up making my edits in the quick mask mode with the black and white paintbrush tool. Remember that black takes away from your selection and white adds, adds to your selection. All right, so now that I've got it pretty much perfect, exactly where I want it, I have to go out of quick mask mode to get my selection back. So to go out of quick mask mode, you're going to either press Q on your keyboard or press that button down here on the bottom left hand um, corner of your toolbar that um, gets us out of the quick mask mode, goes back into our normal mode. So I clicked on that. You can see my, my dotted lines have come back. I have my selection exactly where I want it. It's actually around the bug as opposed to what it did with the automatic with the object selection tool. Sometimes that object selection tool works amazingly. Sometimes it needs a little bit of touching up. And so that's why we have to use that quick mask mode. Um, the red tint, when you go into that quick mask mode, just a reminder, the red tint is the things that are not selected. The correct color, the stuff that is in its normal correct color is, a, is what is selected. 
All right. Nine times out of 10, when I have someone that I'm teaching this to that's having troubles at this point, they haven't gone out of quick mask mode. If you start doing other things like layer mask or editing other things while you're in quick mask mode still, everything is going to kind of get messed up and you're not going to be able to do what you want. So make sure you exit quick mask mode whenever you're done fixing up your selection where those dotted lines are. So I'm outside of my quick mask mode now. I know that because my layer is now gray. I don't see any of that red tint and this is not pressed in. Okay, in regular mode now we're going to add a layer mask, which is different than a quick mask, a layer mask to that firefly layer. So right here, on the layers panel at the bottom, it's the third one over from the left. It says add layer mask. We're going to click on that. And what it did is it cut out the layer the, of what was selected and only shows what was actually selected. So everything else is now masked. Now the way a mask works is it's just like a mask that you wear on your face. It hides part of the image and the other part is showing. So the other part of the image, the grass and the leaf here, is still in my Photoshop file. I have not erased it. This is called non-destructive editing. So if I ever wanted to get that leaf part back, I could go into this mask and it works very similar to the quick mask. I could use a black and white paintbrush tool to fix it up. So for example, the, remember the white adds to my selection. This would add to what I can see. I can draw a line over here and you can see part of the image, which was the black outline of the sky is coming back. All I did was draw on that actual mask. It actually makes more sense if I do it down here on the leaf because that was what was down there. So I'm going to turn off the background layer so you can see a little bit better. Um, this I'm using a a white paintbrush on the mask, not the image, but the mask of that layer and white adds back to my selection. So I'm adding things back. That is how a mask works. So it is literally something that you're throwing on the image. It's hiding part of the image, but the other part of the image is still there. Um, I'm going to do command Z a couple times to get back out of those little things. I was just showing you how the mask works. All right, so we have our layer mask on our flyer fly. If you ever wanted to disable that mask so you could see everything, you could right click on it and disable layer mask. It's not getting rid of it. It's just putting an X on it for right now so you can see it. And then you can always right click and enable it back. Once again, that's called non-destructive editing. That's what we want. That's our goal as um, photo editors is to not destroy any of our images or parts of our images, any of the assets that we're putting together. Um, we want to keep everything intact so that we can always go back and make edits later on. All right, so now that we have made our layer mask, it's only showing what we had selected. Um, now we're going to just make do a little bit of file editing over here. Let's rename these layers. Now this one was called Firefly because that is the file that we put in there. That one's fine. We can leave that name there. The background layer, I'm going to double click on it and rename it light bulb and click OK. So now I have my light bulb layer and my firefly layer. All right, we're going to use the move tool to move this flyer firefly onto the filament in the light bulb. And I'm going to do command minus or you can do control minus on your Windows computer to zoom out a little bit so I can see everything. So with the firefly layer selected and I actually have the thumbnail, the image selected instead of the mask doesn't really matter right now, but there's a reason I'm getting you in the habit of doing that for later on. Um, and I'm going to choose this move tool and I want to make sure that my transform controls are showing. So what that is, is the box around my image that helps me resize it or rotate it. So to resize, as you saw, I just clicked one of the edges and I click and drag down. And then to rotate it, you're just going to click on that corner when the, the, the circular arrow kind of shows up and just rotate it around how you want it. Now, in older versions of Photoshop, when you are resizing an object, you have to hold the shift key to keep your proportions or it would stretch out your image. Photoshop kind of did a whole switcheroo on that in the latest version and you do not have to hold shift. It keeps your proportions perfectly if you are not holding shift. And it's like the opposite. If you are holding shift while you're moving it, you can accidentally squish it or squeeze it or stretch it out. And we don't want to do that. So I'm going to do command Z. So you're not holding down shift if you're in the later versions of Photoshop. If you're in one of the earlier versions, you might have to hold shift to get it perfect. 
So I'm going to make it um, a little bit smaller here, and I'm going to get it so it looks like it's standing on my filament here in my light bulb, something like that. And you can always use the arrow keys on your keyboard to kind of nudge it slowly over if you want it to just move a little bit. So I just use my arrow keys. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more too. Here we go. Almost got it where I want it. Just want it to look like he's standing there on that filament right there. All right, so that's pretty good. Now, once you've got it rotated in size the way that you want it, you have to confirm with Photoshop that that's what you meant to do. So you can do that either by pressing the Enter key or Return key on your keyboard, or you can click this check mark up at the top. I'm going to click the check mark. And now we've got our Firefly where we want them. Okay, so now we've got our light bulb and our Firefly. We're, we're halfway through our process to get this uh, photo manipulation project done. We're now going to go into a new layer over here in our layers panel. So that is down here at the bottom. It looks like a square with a plus sign inside of it. If you hover your mouse over it, it should say create a new layer. And on that layer, we're going to get a paintbrush. And I'm going to change the color on the color picker over here to this like yellowy, orangey color. This is going to be like a glow for our light bulb. So you can kind of choose what shade of yellow you want, but I'm going to do something kind of like that. And I'm going to, with my brush tool selected, change the size really big, something like that, maybe like 200-ish pixels. And then I'm turning my hardness all the way down. So before we wanted the hardness all the way up, so it did not have, it had a hard edge, a solid edge of the brush. Now I want it to be a very soft edge, so it fades. And you can see I'm going to draw around the outside of my light bulb, something like this. Doesn't matter if it's perfect, you just want to get it close to where the outside of the light bulb is. And that's kind of going to be like our glow coming up our light bulb. Now, right now, it looks too much. It's it's very, it looks like someone just painted some yellow on there. So we're going to do a couple effects on this layer to make it look very natural and, um, and very subtle. So the first thing that we're going to do after I painted that, um, I'm going to rename my layer over here so we know what this is. This is the bulb glow. All I did was double, uh, double click on the words for the layer, type it in, and then press enter to rename it. So this is our bulb glow layer. I'm going to turn the opacity of this layer, that's how see-through it is, down to about 30-ish, right about there. You can see it looks a little bit more realistic now, not quite what I want it. I'm also going to um, add a what's called a blending style. So this list right here, this drop down menu is all the different blending styles. And you can see as I go through them, it does some kind of crazy things. Um, some of them look really good. Some of them look crazy. Um, but we're going to do what's um, the soft light one. And that's just going to make it look like it has like a little soft glow right there. So to see this subtle difference, because right now you may not be able to see it very well. If you click the eyeball on that layer, there's no light glowing around it and now there is so that's all we want we just want a little bit of glow around it to make it look like the light bulb is on and right now it's not because we haven't added our glow to turn it on but we will add a glow to our lightning bug so that he is lighting up our light bulb all right so we got our bulb glow we got our firefly and we got our light bulb all right so now we're going to go ahead and select this light bulb layer down here we are our next goal is to make it look like the bug is inside of the bulb instead of outside and it's very subtle the difference that we're going to make here but right now there's no like it doesn't look like there's glass on top of our, our firefly he just looks like he's on the outside of our bulb so we're going to do a, a cool little effect here with our light bulb layer i'm actually going to turn off the firefly layer and turn off the bulb layer or the bulb glow layer so that all we see is the light bulb layer now I'm going to the channels um, tab in my layers panel. So right next to my layers is the channels. And I'm going to hold down the command or the control, command or control key, depending on if you're a Mac or PC, and select the thumbnail for RGB. That's red, green, blue. So that's channel right there. And basically what that did is it made a selection around all of the white tint-ish things that are in our light bulb. So once again, what I did is I clicked on the channel layer over here and then holding down the command key, I clicked on the thumbnail of RGB. Now I'm going to deselect real quick. If I try to do this by clicking on the words RGB, sometimes it does not select the right thing. Sometimes it does. Make sure you're actually collecting, clicking on 
the thumbnail, so the, the image of the RGB over here. So I've got um, my, my selection made. As you can see it's got the dotted lines around all the white stuff in the image. Go back over to my Layers panel, and I have that light bulb layer selected. And then with any of our selection tools selected, it doesn't really matter which one. I'm just going to choose that one because it's easy to get to. I'm going to right click inside of my dotted lines and do layer via copy. And what that's going to do is it copies what is selected to a new layer. So watch my layers panel as I click on this. You can see that layer one just popped up there. And I'm going to turn off my background layer so you can see what it is. You can barely see it, but we got all like the whitish tint areas of the light bulb. So off on, maybe you can see that a little bit. So this, I'm going to call this layer, double click on it, I'm going to call it Top Glass. And we're going to click and drag that above the Firefly. So now when we turn on our Firefly layer and our bulb glow, you can see that now the Firefly kind of looks like it's inside of the glass. And if you want to test to see what it looks like, you can always turn off that top glass layer, turn it off and on, and you can see that there's definitely a difference that it makes. If I zoom in a little bit more, maybe you guys can see it. So turn off. Looks like it's kind of just posted, pasted on top of it. Now it looks like it's inside of our, our light bulb, and that's what we want. All right, zooming back out here. All right, we've got our firefly inside. We've got a glow go glowing around our light bulb. Um, now we really got to get this firefly to have this lightning effect. And so we're going to put a glow on its lower abdomen to make it look like it's glowing. All right, the way that we're going to do this is um, we're going to make a new layer above the firefly. So with the firefly layer selected, I'm going to click new layer. And I'm going to go ahead and name this one. This is going to call, be called Bug Glow Layer. And we're going to get our paintbrush tool again. And I'm going to choose a little bit more of like a orangey color this time. Doesn't matter if yours is exactly right. Mine's like a yellow orange there. I'm going to take my, my paintbrush way down. I'm using the paintbrush tool over here. Let's take it way down so it's about the size of the bug here. I'm just going to paint a little bit on the back end of its abdomen and you don't have to make it perfect um, you know like with light it's glowing you can't see exactly where it's coming from so it's okay if it's not perfect the hardness for my brush is still very low like it was around the outside glow of the light um, so I want it to be a very soft um, edge all right now that I have my um, glow area painted. Now I'm going to do a couple effects to this to make it look more bright and, and shiny. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the filter and I'm going to do what's called a Gaussian blur. So under the blur menu, Gaussian blur. And um, I have the preview checked. If you don't have it checked, then um, you might want to do that. I'm going to turn my radius up to something like um, eight pixels, something right there. And I'm going to uncheck preview so you guys can see the difference. So what it does is it makes it even softer, more blurred in there. So you can kind of see through a little bit to the bug. All right. So I'm going to go and click OK on that one. And then on this layer, the bug glow layer, I'm going to double click. And that's going to give me this layer style menu. And there's lots of different options here. But the one that we want to use is the outer glow. So go ahead and click on the words outer glow. If you just click the checkbox for Outer Glow, you're not going to get all the options that you had. So I'm going to cancel this and show you again because this is another common mistake that I have when people are doing this project. So if you double click on the Bug Glow, if you just check Outer Glow, you're not getting a lot of blend or a lot of options for the Outer Glow. But if you click the word Outer Glow, now you have the Outer Glow options, and that's what we really want. First thing that we want to do for Outer Glow is change the color to a bright orange. So this is like what's going to be on the outside of our um, light here. So we want it to be very bright. And then um, you can change the spread and the size of it to kind of get it where you want it. Now this is really the art part of it and you have to decide what looks good. So we have spread and size here. I can make it really, really big so it's like very bright or I can take it down a little bit. I might change this to a little bit of a darker orange, maybe like a more reddish orange. You can change the opacity, so how see-through it is. Um, I think I like it a little bit darker, but maybe not so big. Maybe turn that size down a little bit. And maybe turn the spread up a little bit. So this is where you really have to play around with it. Um, definitely need a bigger spread there. 
get it to where you think it looks good. And you can always play around with um, some of the other settings to get it exactly where you like it as well. And um, this check box right here for a preview, if you don't have that checked, then it's going to make it really hard for you to see um, what's going on. So you definitely want to have that checked as well. If you go to like soft light, that might make it look a little bit more realistic. I think that looks good for me. Um, I'm gonna, still playing around with my spread there. You can always click inside of here and go up and down with your keyboard to make it a slower change, a more subtle change. I think that looks pretty good right there. All right, I'm gonna click OK. If you wanna see what it looks like before and after what we just did, this right here is the effects that we just put on the outer glow. I can click on that eyeball and you can see before and after. It just gives it a nice little subtle glow, makes it look a little bit more um, like the, the bug is, is glowing. I'm gonna take that opacity down on that layer just down to maybe 90, just to make it a little bit more um, see-through so you can see the, the bug still. All right, so now we've got our image that we have completely edited and changed. It's a, our photo manipulation project here. We've got a firefly inside of a light bulb with a little bit of glow here. Um, it looks really cool. I want to show you again just what it looked like beforehand. So if I turn off all these layers, all we had was this light bulb. And then we added on our bug. We added the, gl the glow on our bug. We added the top glass layer, which made it look like it was inside. And then we added a little glow on the outside. So a lot of little subtle changes that makes this photo manipulation project look really cool. Now that you are done, we're going to go ahead and save it. File, save as. And you're going to save it on your computer. I'm going to name it last name, first initial, and this one's going to be underscore one, manipulation one. And obviously you're gonna write your real first last name and your real first initial, initial, there we go. And then um, save that as a Photoshop file. So that's the one that you could edit later. Go ahead and click okay. And then we're going to also export it as a PNG. So file, export, quick export as a PNG. It already has the correct name, click save, and you're good to go. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and drop a line in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for alerts of when new videos are posted. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy creating.